I love my bamboo 3D printers that I have here. However, like every 3D printer, these also need to be maintained. One of the items that needs to be exchanged from time to time is this one here. It's the activated carbon filter. It comes in that little cardboard box, has a little bit of carbon inside and has a little latch here. So I can pull it out. It's right on the back of the printer. Bamboo Labs sells these like this in a little box. Each one is $5.99. And you have to change it like every 60 days or every 1,440 hours of print. That can get really expensive, depending on how much you print and how many printers you have. So I thought there must be a better way. So I went online and I looked for another solution. And this is what I found. A little box printed, you can print it yourself with a lid and you can put the carbon right in here. You just have to get the carbon. And of course, carbon is not very expensive. Carbon is used for many, many other things. Like if you have a reverse osmosis filter, it has the activated carbon in it. Or if you have an aquarium, you're probably very familiar with carbon too. So why pay $5.99 if I can put the carbon in myself and whenever I need it, I'm just going to change it. So I went online and I got myself some carbon. And this is what I found. A big box, 10 pounds of carbon for $30. Hmm. They come in this baggies. And yes, they are dirty when you buy them. So let's go and wash. Let's start to wash this out. And you can see how much dirt, how much dust that we get out of here. So you want to do that until there is no more dust inside because you really don't want to have the dust anywhere in your machine. And here we are with the Cleden activated carbon. Opening the bag, this is how it looks like. It's like little rolls. And this is what I found to put the carbon in on printables. So now I'm going to fill that up. I'm going to take the lid off. I'm going to start filling it. That's why I have a little container because I don't want to make a big mess. There we go. And I'm going to close that door up here. And that looks pretty good. Oh, did you see that? There was just one falling out. Well, that's not going to be good. You know, if one of those falls out, it goes right into the fan and that's not a good thing. So that's not going to work for me. I got to come up with something better. Hmm. Maybe if I would put some screen material on there, maybe. Let me see what I can find. So here I'm searching for screen material. Looks pretty good. There is a lot of different screens. Uh, this one I think is a little bit too big from the mesh size. I don't think I can use that one. Actually, what about this one? A repair kit. Hmm. This one already has the adhesive on it. Might make it easier to apply. I think I'm gonna try this. So this is what I found. It's a screen with an adhesion on one side and then you can just take it like tape and you can put it on your ripped screen that you have. So that will be perfect. I'm also thinking if I look at this, I might do better. So I made this one here, which gives it more 
space to go through with the tape. And it still is gonna hold because of the cross beams. So I made it and I started to put it together just to find out that there is no air going through. It is a tape, it looks like a screen, but it's actually a tape. So that's not gonna do anything for me. How do I get something that is as close as this as possible and safe? I don't wanna, I don't wanna risk this one here. I, could, I just can't do it. Let's go back to the computer and see what I can come up with. So I played around a little bit in uh, Fusion 360 and here is a box I came up with. As you can tell, those are super tiny holes. Those holes are so tiny, they are one millimeter diameter each. Now, if I'm thinking about printing this with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, it's probably not gonna work, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Worst case, I can always switch to a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, which makes more sense. But it looks pretty promising the way it is right now. So, I'm gonna try this and let's see how it prints. And here it is. It's done, it's printed. It actually worked to print this. You can hardly tell that there is something. It's so fine. It's just, I can't believe that it's printable. Let's fill that one up. Oops. Not gonna go a mess here. Making it straight and close it. Well, that's perfect. That I can use. Hmm. But I need to have some kind of a ledge to take it out. Um, oh, yeah. I think that should work. Let's see. I'm just gonna take some tape here. Like from the inside up. Like this. I'm gonna close it and then just double it up so it's not sticky any longer. Yeah, that works. So here is the inside of the printer. This is that door. And here we got the old cartridge. I'm gonna take that one out. I'm gonna take my new self-made one. Put it in. Fits perfect. That works too. I'm gonna just put this down and close the door. And it's all done. So now let's find out how many times I can fill one of those self-made ones compared to the ones that I bought for six dollars. So let me weigh first an empty one. And then I set it to zero. And I'm gonna put the full one on here. So it's 46 grams. So that means if I have 10 kilograms that I can feel it at least 200 times. So if you have one printer, that's gonna be enough for the next 30 plus years. Hmm, that's a pretty good deal. What a fun little project that was. Now it's your turn. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. See you soon.